Greetings and welcome to Physical Biology of the Cell 20, 2021 edition, uh, pandemic edition. So rather than taking place on the campus of Caltech, this is going to take place through pre-recorded lectures and, and then uh, us convening as a course together on Zoom. So um, the, the first week, the intention is to set the stage both philosophically and in terms of trying to provide a sense of what it would mean for us to understand biological problems. And as an inspiration, I wanna introduce a slogan which comes from Barbara McClintock. So there's a wonderful book that I recommend that everyone read by Evelyn Fox Keller called A Feeling for the Organism. And it tells, it recounts the, the life and science of Barbara McClintock. So th this is a very brief vignette, and, um, and many of the lectures this week are not gonna be lectures per se, but rather will be little short snippets intended to capture one or two key ideas and can, can be taken sort of in small doses. So what I wanna say here is a little bit about McClintock's work and then a little bit more about her perspective and her approach. So Barbara McClintock was a lone researcher, largely. She was an undergrad, if I remember correctly, at Cornell University. There she got interested in plants. She was a researcher at the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories, and she faced many obstacles in her career, and one of my, the reasons I admire her the most, in fact, is because of her pluck, her willingness to endure the haters, the people that naysayed her work, and she had the courage to resist the, the onset of the only way to do biology is molecular biology. Of course, that's an exaggeration, but you know, at, in every generation, there are people that resist the fads, and, the, and that was a, it was a good fad. It was a fad that made sense, but nevertheless, she resisted. So she worked on corn and, or mace, and one of her objectives was she wanted to have an intimate relationship with the microscopic chromosomal structure that was exhibited by her uh, plants. But at the same time, or the cells that make up the plants, at the same time, she wanted to be able to say something about their macroscopic phenotypes. I liked her notion of understanding where she says, if something doesn't fit, there's a reason and you find out what it is. It reminds me very much of the biography of Einstein by Abraham Pice called Subtle as the Lord, um, where he talks about in order, the, in order to be surprised, one has to have a theory or a prejudice, some sort of an idea a priori of, of what one expects. And these are good pressure points for research. When one asks, wants to ask the question of what should I work on, well, it doesn't have to be an agreed upon anomaly from the point of view of the entire community, but it might be something that for you, you say, that doesn't somehow square with what I think the entirety of the subject should look, look like. Um, I like the second point here. McClintock didn't believe in the routine and hence did not delegate any of the activities to others. Um, she was claimed that this was part of how she had a feeling for the organism. Um, I love this comment. She could write the autobiography of every plant she worked with. And I think this is amusing because historically, the reason that people went away from Mendel's peas, just for example, is because they were too slow. And I, I like what, what uh, she says over here. No two plants are exactly alike. They're all different. And as a consequence, you have to know that, that difference, she explains. I start with the seedling and I don't want to leave it. I don't feel I really know the story if I don't watch the plant all the way along. So I know every plant in the field, know them intimately, and I find it a great pleasure to know them. Oh, her answer is simple. Over and over again, she tells us, one has, must have the time to look, the patience to hear what the material has to, has to say to you, the openness to let it come to you. Above all, one must have a feeling for the organism. So for us in this course, the feeling for the organism is going to be viewed through the prism, through the lens of biological numeracy. And what I mean by that is the idea that, that by demanding to describe some phenomenon in the world around us, whether it's inanimate world or animate world, in terms of numbers, that actually sharpens the way that we can talk about and think about that subject. And it also often makes it so that we can falsify our thinking more quickly. So again, the point of this was a little bit of hero worship to use Barbara McClintock and the slogan of a feeling for the organism as a template for what we're going to do the entire term.